Climate change is real. Humans are responsible for a substantial part of it. It's taking us in dangerous directions. Uh, the effects of climate change are generally thought of into three, in three major categories. Increasing temperature, altered precipitation patterns, and rising sea level. But those three things together do a variety of things around the planet. The ability to farm will change. The ability to live on the shores of the world's oceans will change. And of course, as the climate changes, the nature of crops will change hundreds of millions to billions of people who will have to move because of this, because most of human development is along coastlines. Global climate change is the most dangerous and the most difficult of all of the environmental problems that humans have ever caused and probably will ever cause. One of the very first places that I went to report on climate change was a tiny um, village in Alaska, an Inupiat village called Shishmaref. Uh, and the people in Shishmaref, people have lived in Shishmaref on a, in a seasonal way for hundreds of years. Uh, and this island is just disappearing, it's just eroding away. And that's happening uh, all around the Arctic. There are just islands uh, that are disappearing. I've seen change such as uh, um, the seasons that we hunt, the fish that we fish, the um, weather around us, you know, the weather's warmer, uh, the winters are shorter. I've seen probably close to 100 feet of land that's been eroded away on the north side of the island. The uh, ponds and lakes, uh, they're drying up. We subsist mostly on like seals, walrus, uh, fish, clams, you know, whatever we can get from the sea. And the fish are way up river and gone somewhere else. And then our, our permafrost nowadays when we bury our uh, subsistence food is very shallow now because the sun is so hot, the sun might heat up the sand and then spoil our food, you know, so that's what I'm worried about. Everything is changing very dramatically for a lot of native communities in the Arctic. As you see Inuit villages being forced to be relocated away from the shoreline, you see a preview of the fate that is going to befall London and Washington DC and New York and Boston and Bombay as sea level goes up worldwide. Teachers have a tremendously important role to play in this issue because they serve two kinds of functions. One kind of function is teachers teach us what we need to know about the world. But there's a second function. Every major scientist I know has been inspired by a teacher. As a parent, um, it, I often wonder, you know, what's going to happen? You know, are my kids going to have the same opportunities? One of the areas where teachers can reinforce, not only in classrooms, but in fact in the extracurricular activities, is that message of what conservation means. As scientists in the 21st century, we have a tremendous responsibility, not only to ourselves and our children, but to our grandchildren, to their children, to make sure that they have an environment that will, in fact, sustain human life for centuries to come. It's up to the young people of today to make sure that the world has a viable future. I think where you're seeing a lot of loss is up in places like the native villages of Alaska where people have passed down through hundreds of generations, you know, how you read the weather, how you read when a certain kind of seal is going to come in, when a certain kind of whale is going to come in, those hunting patterns, those fishing patterns. Our ice conditions were uh, much thicker and the hunting was good, animals were close. We noticed um, the condition of the ice got much thinner year by year. One of the interesting things that people will tell you up now in the Arctic is they can't predict. They can't predict what's going on. The weather has become more unpredictable. The patterns of where you're going to find animals have become more unpredictable. One of the things that I remember from the past was to play traditional games in front of our community, you know, out front on the beach. But nowadays, the waves are lapping right up against the bank. 
and it um, it's taken you know a, it's taken away a part of our um, ch childhood. When I was young, springtime with my grandfather, even with my dad, when we had dog teams, even though it was late spring. They hitch up their dogs and we just go across the lagoon. But we can tell it was safe by the coloration of the ice. Once it's blue, it's solid ice. If it's gray, it's not it's unsafe. Nowadays, you don't see this coloration of blue ice anymore. It's all young ice, thin ice. Those changes that we see in the natural world are really uh, metaphors or, or models, if you will, of what will be happening to people. So we got a problem here that requires that we change things in quite fundamental ways, change the way we're supplying energy to the whole world's economy, and it requires that we start doing it soon before we have irreversibly committed ourselves to a trajectory that completely wrecks the world's climate. The biggest cause of the global climatic disruption is the buildup of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and that comes principally from the combustion of fossil fuels and from the deforestation that is going on, particularly in tropical forests around the world. Fossil fuels are essential to the world's energy supply. Eighty percent of the world's energy supply is coming from those fossil fuels, and deforestation is deeply embedded in the process of development as it is occurring today. And so you've got causes of the global climatic disruption that are not easy to address. You have to address how we get the energy for civilization, and you have to address the whole pattern of economic development in the tropics. People frequently say, but what I do, I'm one of many billions of people. Well, if many millions of those billions of people were to reduce their own individual energy use, the impact would be tremendous. It's not beyond our knowledge base to fix this problem. So I mean simply, you know, raising your uh, thermostat a couple of degrees in summer and lowering it a couple of degrees in the winter can save a tremendous amount of energy. But uh, probably just as important is becoming politically active. As we pass over critical thresholds, to warmer and warmer climates, it will become more and more difficult to reverse or even to lessen the impact of this global climate change. The effects of global warming will be widespread from uh, the poles to the equator from coast to coast, and not just in remote areas, but people are really beginning to understand the way global warming will affect their everyday lives. The reality is, is that once we hit what some people refer to as a tipping point in climate change, the world becomes a dramatically dif different place very quickly. We're talking about changes on a, on a magnitude that, that are really just off the charts. If we can muster a high enough level of understanding in the general public, if we can muster the political will in the nation's policymakers, we can take concrete steps that will in fact lessen the impact of global climate change as it's occurring. As dangerous and difficult as the climate change problem is, there are a lot of things that can be done about it and they can be done without catastrophic costs, without an affordable economic cost without massive changes in the way we live. We hope to pass on our traditions to our uh, younger generations and generations to come. <laughs>